So now let's do question six, which is under financial maths. It says Janet invest a lump sum of five thousand rand into a savings account exactly for exactly two years. The investment earns an interest of ten percent per annum, compoundedly compounded quarterly. Right. So now the first question says, what is the quarterly interest rate for Janet's investment? So now the interest rate that is quarterly, right, is going to be ten percent divided by. So remember percent. 10% divided by 4 because quarterly means 4 then you're gonna get your answer of 2.5% so that's the percent for compoundedly or quarterly sorry it's quarterly interest so now moving to the second question it says calculate the amount that Janice savings account will have at the, will have at the end of two years so we know the fact that this is since it's compoundedly quarterly the compounded part means the fact that it's compound interest so 6.1.2 this is 6.1.1 it's going to be a is equals to p open bracket 1 plus i to the power n right so we need a we're looking for a so let's write the given information p is equals to what to 5000 rand then i is equals to what it's equals to 2.5 percent right then n is equals to what is equals to two years but it needs to be multiplied by what by four all right so now let's substitute everything now if you punch this into the calculator you're gonna get your answers being in rents remember so this will be your final answer which is six thousand six thousand ninety two comma zero one cents so this is going to be your final answer now moving to the second part of the question. Now, moving on to the second part of the question, it says C. Claire inherits 800,000 Rand. He invests the entire inheritance into a fund which earns interest rate of 14% per annum compounded what? Monthly. If it's compounded monthly, meaning it's going to be multiplied by 12, right? Um, your interest rate is going to be divided by 12. So, at the end of each month, CK withdraws 10,000 from the fund. His first withdrawal is exactly one month after his initial investment, right? So the first part says how many withdrawals of 10,000 rand will CK be able to make from his fund? So we need to calculate the amount, the, the, the number of withdrawals that CK is going to make. So we're going to use what present interest? For 6,2.1, we're going to use PV. The reason why is because of CK is withdrawing right so let's do that so we know the fact that the formula is going to be pv is equals to x open bracket one minus open bracket one plus i to the power negative n and that's divided by what by i so before we substitute let's write all the given information pv is your eight hundred thousand then we have X, which is the monthly installment, which is 10,000 Rand. Then we have I. Remember the fact that they said it's what? It's compoundedly, it's compounded monthly. So it's going to be what? It's going to be 14% divided by 12, right? So it's going to be 14% divided by 12. Then the last part is just N, which is the one that we're looking for. So let's substitute everything that we have. So it's going to be 800,000. It's equals to 10,000. Then let's substitute the rest. So let's simplify this. We're going to take this 14% divided by 12 and multiplied by 800,000 which is going to be equals to let's simplify this part so it's going to give me remember another thing is that do not write this in decimal form leave it in fraction form so that your answer does not become a little bit distorted so now we're going to divide both sides by 10 so it's going to be this whole thing divided by 10 divided by 10,000 and this side the 10,000 is going to be cancelled so you're going to be left with let's simplify this one which is you're going to get then you're going to 
1 minus let's simplify the one inside the bracket which is you're gonna get now take the one to the other side so it's gonna be minus 1 it's gonna be equals to then simplify this side so which is you're gonna get remember this is negative I did a mistake remember that it's both negative and this one is negative 2 from this negative sign I forgot to write it then what's gonna happen is the negative signs are gonna drop because they both negative so you're gonna have 1 over 15 is equals to now since this is like this we need to change it into log so that we can solve for instance n is the exponent let me demonstrate something this n is going to be on the other side of the equal sign so other side then this part is going to be the base of your exponent and this one is going to be the one that's next to the that's the top part of the log you'll see what I mean I don't know what's called rewrite it as log so it's gonna be log then the base comes here then this one comes here then equals to negative n so when you punch this into the calculator you're going to get negative 3 negative 2 3 3 comma 4 7 is equals to negative n the negatives are gonna drop so n is gonna be equals to 2 3 3 comma 4 7 so n is gonna be therefore estimated to be equals to 2 3 3 so this will be your final answer so the last question says exactly four years exactly four years after his initial deposit Sika decides to withdraw all the money remaining from his account to use to deposit towards a house. So the first part says, what is the value of Seeker's deposit into in the closest rand, right? So the first thing is that we know the fact that he invested 800,000 rand, right? So after he, he invested 800,000 rand, then he got monthly installment of what? Of 10,000. So first is that when you invest money, the money grows, right? So first we need to calculate his growth, the growth of the money after four years. So that's the first part that we're going to do. So we're going to use compound interest to do that. Then we're going to, P is going to be your 800 hundred thousand remember that the interest rate was 14,000 PA compounded monthly so it's going to be 0 comma 1 4 divided by 12 because it's compounded monthly to the power what it says after four years so it's going to be 4 multiplied by 12 then you're going to put this in your calculator after four years this is how much the money is worth right but remember is that this is the money if he never touched it he never got any monthly withdrawals this will be his money but remember the fact that he had 10,000 monthly withdrawals so we need to subtract that amount so let's calculate how much was that monthly how much was those monthly installments right or withdrawals so we're gonna use the future value formula so we're calculating how much the monthly withdrawals were worth so x is going to be 10,000 because that's what's the monthly withdrawals the interest rate is the same with the or throughout the same equation to the power what it's going to be 4 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 12 and when you punch this into the calculator you're going to get so this is the money that he's been getting every month right so now we want to know how much is remaining so that's the part that we're going to calculate now so the remaining amount which is going to be what the one that you invested minus your monthly so that's what we're going to do it's going to be minus your monthly so therefore your final answer is going to be so this will be the money that he actually withdraws and deposit towards a house so now going to the second part of the question it says Sihle deposit exactly 30% of the purchase price of the house. What is the purchase price of the house? So we know the fact that the money that he deposited was what? Was this amount, right? The remaining amount from the trust fund that he inherited, right? So 30%, we know the fact that this is going to be 30%, right? Of whatever X amount of the cost of the purchase, right? Which is, is what we want. And that's going to be equals to your deposit. So 30% of whatever the cost of the house is going to be equals to your deposit. So basically what you're going to do, you're going to divide both sides by 30% and therefore your purchase price is going to be equals to 2 million 500 and so this will be your purchase price.